One month after the decree by the head of state cancelling the June 30 elections, the first investigative commission for the removal of the president in the history of Albanian democracy has been established. Interviews for candidates for the special anti-corruption prosecution are progressing according to schedule, with prosecutors declaring today that threats and pressure from criminal groups do not affect their work. The new draft law tabled by Minister Belinda Baluku has bothered the Albanian confindustry, with Administrator Jared Fujuku saying that it is absurd for the commencement its concernment of passing on the cost of inabilities to citizens and businesses. It's six o'clock on Thursday, the 11th of July, 2019. Good evening and thank you for tuning in to RTV Aura's English edition. My name is Alexandra, bringing you the only daily update of the local Albanian news translated into English. One month after the decree by the head of state for the cancellation of the June 30 elections, an investigative commission for the dismissal of the president has been established for the first time in the country's democratic history. Ilya Meta will be investigated for a period of three months by the chair of the commission, Ulsi Manya, and eight other MPs, four from the majority and four from the opposition, for seriously violating the constitution. The commission has been set up based on a request made by 55 socialist MPs. If the investigative commission asks for parliament to dismiss President Meta, he will become the first president to be dismissed by the parliament, despite the fact that the final word for his removal from this post should only be given by the constitutional court. The Albanian National Association of Judges has filed a lawsuit against the Council of Ministers requesting the return of diplomatic passports removed by Acting Minister for Europe and Foreign Affairs, Gent Tsakai. The lawsuit was filed at Tirana's Administrative Court of Appeal. The initial hearing is expected to be conducted soon before the trial dates are officially set. The association has authorised Florian Kalaya, a judge from Flora's Judicial District Court, and Engert Palumbi, a judge from Fierce Court, to allow the case against the Council of Ministers. The case requires the plaintiff to prove the lawlessness of the government's decision. On the 9th of April 2019, the Acting Minister for Europe and Foreign Affairs, Gen Sakai, withdrew the right to diplomatic passports for approximately 350 individuals. Among them were former MPs who have completed their mandates, judges who have not yet passed vetting, and members of officials' entourages. The High Council of the Prosecution continued with their fourth day of conducting interviews with candidates for the Special Anti-Corruption Prosecution, or SPAC. First off the rank today was the Serious Crimes Prosecutor, Ened Nakuchi, who submitted the files he has investigated, among which were both the Clement Balili file and the case known as the Revenge of Justice. During the interview, he was asked about any ongoing threats from criminal groups he investigated, to which he responded that, whilst he had certainly received some, he remained undeterred in bringing them to justice. The following interview was with Prosecutor Enkeleda Milonai and then Enkeleda Jengo. They were both asked about pressure they received and how they thought they could contribute more as a part of SPAC. The final interview was conducted with Prosecutor Claudian Brajo, who investigated senior state officials who were successfully sentenced in final decisions. I did not receive any death threats, but I certainly was pressured by the people I have investigated, especially about filing cases with the court, the prosecutor said. Claudian Brajo is currently investigating former Chief Prosecutor Adriatic Lala, while, in, he, while previously he has investigated the former Mayor of Laura, Shwetim Jika, who was accused of falsification of documents and illegal construction. The HCP's interview process is scheduled to be finalised tomorrow after interviews are conducted with Dritan Prenci, Ndini Tavani, Maxim Sota and Vladimir Mara. In the middle of next week, the High Council of the Prosecution is expected to complete the scoring and rake the candidates. The new draft law on fuel deposits, which is expected to raise the fuel price by about 20 lek per litre, has also been opposed by the industry. The Albanian Confindustry has requested that the draft law distributed by Minister Belinda Baluku be reviewed as they determine it unfair, adding that the government's inability should not result in additional costs to ordinary citizens and businesses. The Confindustry Administrator says that the price of fuel in Albania is among the highest in the world, and this affects the welfare of citizens as well as the competitiveness of businesses. According to the Confindustry, the government is abusing the non-functioning parliament by passing a very poor quality draft law. Albanians spend 10.3% of their income on fuel alone, a level many times higher than in other European countries. According to the Confindustry, a regulatory entity is required in order to stabilise this market, with their responsibilities including regulating the price and quality of fuel products circulating the market. 
Secondly, they demand stamp duty on vehicles to be reduced by at least 50%, amounting to 120 million euro per year. Local units should have a special vice chair who only deals with agricultural issues. This was the request made by the Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development, Bledi Tucci, to the new mayors across the country. He considers it an important aspect for the development of this sector. The Agricultural Minister stated this during the signing of an agreement on irrigation of agricultural land in four municipalities. A European police officer will work from a special office within the Albanian police structures in order to intensify cooperation between Albania and the European Union. At the opening ceremony of the Europol liaison office in Tirana, the European Union ambassador for Albania, Luigi Sareca, and the interior minister, Sandro Leshai, described it as a step towards EU membership. The opening of the Europol office in Tirana is a very important and positive event. In the last 10 years, the number of people crossing the borders of the Republic of Albania has increased by 160%. The trend continues with the same growth rate. This figure is enough to show the extraordinary level reached by the movement of people and goods. The integration process does not negatively affect security, but strengthens it, expressed Leishai. Deepening integration should be accompanied by unstoppable growth and continuous exchange of cooperation and information. We need to ensure that this does not only occur at the level of political statement, but also in everyday practice, said Minister Leishai. Also discussing the impacts the presence of Europol in Albania has on overall relations with the EU, Ambassador Luigi Soreca had this to say, the increase, this increased cooperation at an operational level can only contribute to building Albania's case in EU capitals, in view of the Council decision in October on the opening of EU accession talks. I was a strong advocate in my previous position in the European Commission of ensuring that Albania is one of the first countries to have a Europol liaison officer deployed. I am glad to see that the initial seeds planted some time ago are today bringing fruit. I remain more than ever convinced that the work of a Europol liaison officer will be very beneficial to EU-Albania police cooperation. The EU ambassador also expressed his conviction that Europol and the Albanian State Police will now be able to bring police cooperation between the European Union and Albania to the next level. In her speech, the Europol executive director, De Bol, stated that this is not the end but just the beginning of cooperation in the security field. Meanwhile, the director of the State Police, Ardi Beliu, emphasised the cooperation between the two structures by listing some of the international operations in which Albania has participated. During 2018, eight operations were conducted by Europol's National Bureau. Meanwhile, during the first six months of this year, 12 operations were conducted. In the recent months, only three international operations have been coordinated and directed by Europol, with the state police participating alongside its counterparts, said Ardi Beliu. Following the first ever deployment of Frontex forces in a country outside the EU, at Albania's borders, the country is now home to the second ever Europol office outside the EU and the first in the region. The first Europol office created outside the EU is in Washington, D.C. After the political storm caused in Pristina, Skopje and Tirana, the Prime Minister of North Macedonia, Zoran Zaev, has withdrawn his claims that Presidents Thaci and Vucic have agreed to approve changes to the borders between Kosovo and Serbia. Zaev called on President Hashim Thaci to apologise while asserting that the allegations raised in the call with two Russian comedians were just gossip. The Kosovo President Hashim Thaci accepted this. Thaci said that Prime Minister Zayev called him and explained that his declarations regarding territorial swaps are hearsay and not based on official information. He told me very clearly that there was a circumstance in which he fell prey to manipulation and that he spoke about 10 Kosovo municipalities being given to Serbia on the basis of rumours and misinformation. These are the words, he said, apologising to me personally and also to Kosovo, said Thaci. The head of state said that he was called by the same person, but he did not fall prey to the same manipulations, for which he thanked his cabinet. Asked about relations between Kosovo and North Macedonia, President Thaci said they will continue to remain correct. And that's the news across the country today. Thank you for watching our English edition this evening and be sure to join us again every Monday to Saturday at 6pm for the latest news from Albania. 
Once again, on behalf of RTV Aura, thank you and good night.